Hi everyone, so I have here an Anang AC27 socket tester, um, which can be kind of a useful little gadget to quickly and easily determine if a socket is wired correctly. You compare the, the lights that light up here to this little chart, and hopefully the left one does not light up and the right two do light up, and that tells you your socket is wired correctly. And of course you could do that with a multimeter, it just takes a little longer to check the different combinations, live to neutral, live to ground, ground to neutral. Um, but you probably couldn't do a leakage test with your multimeter, although I can kind of fake it on my Fluke 117 with the low impedance mode, that low Z mode is low enough impedance that it actually does, in my experience, trip ground fault protection systems, so that's kind of neat. But this allows you to very quickly plug in and push the button and that should trip the system. Um, socket detector is maybe a little bit of a funny name for it. it. It's usually called a socket tester. It's not detecting the existence of a socket, but I guess that's what I get for buying the cheap straight from China model. So let's take a look at this and see how it works. So I get the correct lights when I plug it in, but when I push the button, it doesn't trip. And you can see the receptacle still works because I can push the button, the test button on the receptacle and it does trip and I can reset it. And so after trying for quite a while to pry this thing open, I found out there are two screws hidden underneath the label. So you have to peel that label off in order to get inside of this thing. And then once that's open, a screw at each corner of the PCB in order to get it off and actually look at its components. And so with that done, here's our circuit board. Nothing too terribly complicated. You can see that we go from the live connection through a diode labeled M7, through a little resistor, through this LED, through another resistor to ground or earth. We also go from live through a resistor, LED, resistor, diode here to neutral. And then finally from neutral through a diode, resistor, LED, resistor to ground. And then over here is where we're supposed to be doing a leakage test, which goes from live through two resistors that depending on which way you turn up is either labeled 682 or 289. I assume it has to be 682, which would be 6.8 kilo ohms. Um, and two of those should have been about right. At 120 volts, I would figure two of those resistors for a total of 13.6K would give about 8 or 9 milliamps, which should have been enough to trip a GFCI. So we'll have to pull out the multimeter and see if something's not working here. And would you look at this? So the resistors are fine. I think the switch is okay, but see this connector here labeled E for Earth with a green wire attached to it? It's going on to the neutral, and the black wire is attached to the ground, the, the ground rod. And the black wire over here is connected to neutral. So we've got ground and neutral reversed, which is ironically the one fault that you wouldn't notice, the one fault that wouldn't cause an incorrect arrangement of the lights. But it disabled the test because it wasn't leaking current to ground, it was leaking it to neutral, which is where it was supposed to go. Another thing that I find kind of interesting from just looking at this plastic housing is this cutout here that looks like they're using this same plastic housing for the AC28 version of this socket detector, which has a, a voltage display on it. I have the AC27 version, which doesn't have that display. It also looks like they made provision here, right there, 
for another LED, which I assume would be to actually visually confirm that the leakage current test is happening. Um, but it doesn't look like the AC27 or 28 actually uses an LED there, so maybe that's just something they were thinking about doing and decided not to do, or maybe that's for future expansion, or, or maybe one of you can find another model that actually has that, but I didn't see a model that actually uses that feature. And similarly, they seem to have allowed for the leak test button to go over here instead of down here, and that's... It's in this lower position on both the 27 and 28. All right, so I've switched the wires around on the PCB end. It does pain me a little bit to use the green wire for neutral, um, but it's, it's easier to change it here on the PCB end, both because maneuvering inside this plastic housing is a little tighter and the actual blades of the outlet act as heat sinks, which make it hard to solder and risk of melting the plastic housing and, and turning the plug all wonky, which I definitely don't want to do. So green is the neutral and that's that, and we won't be able to see it once we close it up again. So fingers crossed that this thing will work now. And this is actually not the first time I've bought a product from AliExpress that has come wired wrong. Um, I don't know if you know this, but on the back of TVs these days, if you don't see a set of RCA jacks, you might just need a simple physical adapter. I was trying to connect a DVD player to a TCL TV, um, and it does not have RCA jacks on the back, but it turns out that you just need to convert it to that 3.5 millimeter jack with a, a simple physical adapter, and it does accept the analog input. So that's a little disappointing that I've gotten two different products, actually three, because I got two of these adapters from two different sellers, thinking surely one of them would work, and they were both wired wrong for a TCL TV, even though they were explicitly advertised for a TCL TV. But anyway, I, I digress. The real point here is that this is the second time I've bought an ad egg product and been a little bit disappointed about what I saw when I opened it up. You'll recall last time that I was looking at the AN101 pocket multimeter and I found some sort of conductive looking material bouncing around on the inside looking like it was just waiting to short something out. Um, but at least that device was functional. This one was actually wired wrong. Well, I guess it's functional as long as you don't push the leakage test button because like I said, that's that's the one fault, switching ground and neutral, that you will not ever see on the list because it's not a fault that can be detected. There's no real way to distinguish between neutral and ground. And that also means that in some cases you can trick the tester into thinking that things are okay when they're not. Sometimes a dishonest individual might take a home that was originally wired with just two prong circuits so it doesn't have a ground wire and they will attach a, a bootleg ground which is just a, a jumper over to the neutral and so this simple little test reads a path to ground on the ground because the neutral wire is grounded and it can't tell that there isn't a proper ground. And there's really no way for any socket detector to test for that. I guess if you have a multimeter, you could try to measure the resistance from neutral to ground. And as long as you're not too close to your breaker panel, a, a very low resistance would look suspicious just because um, a jumper from neutral to ground inside that electrical box right in front of you would have extremely low resistance and going all the way down the circuit to your breaker panel where the two are bonded together would have a little bit higher resistance but even then that's that's assuming you can make very fine distinctions in resistance and i suppose if someone really wanted to be clever if, if socket testers started doing that then they might just start putting a one ohm resistor when they're trying to bootleg a neutral so and then also the leakage test button will not work if there is not a ground. That's a gotcha you can run into sometimes. You can be plugging this into a circuit that has the three-prong outlet but is not wired to ground. And that's usually considered allowable if it's protected by a GFCI protection, but 
this tester won't be able to test it because it can't leak current to ground if there is no ground. So in truth, the only way to properly test a GFCI receptacle is to use the test button, which still bleeds that leakage current through the neutral, but it bypasses the detection circuitry so it can see an imbalance. So that is a limitation of this on older homes that may have originally been built with just the basic two-prong outlets and that have subsequently been upgraded to three-prong outlets by use of ground fault protection to make it okay to get around the fact that there is no protective earth. And technically you should see a sticker on there that says that there is no protective earth, but who knows if that sticker is still there or was ever placed there in the first place. So a couple gotchas to watch out for when using these things, but they are quick and easy. I guess if there's a will, there's a way. If you really wanted to distinguish ground from neutral, you could put enough load on the circuit. And when you put load on the circuit, the ground, the live to ground voltage should be a little bit higher than the live to neutral voltage. So that's, that's something that I guess a person could do. But as far as I know, no one's built a tester like that. And some of the more expensive ones have a feature where they'll actually sound a tone when they have power, so you can go into a different room and start flipping breakers, and when you hear that tone stop, you'll know you flipped the correct breaker. That can be useful if you don't have anyone to help you and you're trying to figure out which breaker is powering a particular outlet. So you don't get that here, um, and you don't get that on the AC28 either, so that's not something you find on the cheaper models. I, in general, don't like stuff beeping at me unnecessarily, but sometimes it's useful. All right, so let's try that again. There we go. So anyway, that's that. We got it working. It's maybe a little bit disappointing that you buy a socket tester to tell you if your socket is wired wrong and the tester itself is wired wrong, but I guess that's how it goes sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks.